grief. It's a tiny word for a gargantuan emotion. Death is the most common conduit through which we express grief. We can also experience grief through a breakdown of a relationship, the dissolution of a friendship, the loss of opportunity. You sleep in on an important call. Your closest friend moves worlds apart. Your laptop dies on the final sentence of your thesis. We've been given a roadmap for grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. But there are other stages intermingled within those. Vast isolation within everyday life, the effect loss has on memories, physical manifestations of grief, apathy, loss of self, fear. These experiences aren't always linear, and they don't always progress to acceptance. Whatever the cause and whatever the stage, there's an expectation that it gets better, that it will be overcome eventually, that it isn't eternal. And I feel there should be more conversation about that. The world keeps spinning and you keep from falling apart, but at what cost? We have all experienced how grief changes and moves over time. Its metamorphosis takes us by surprise and hits us again and again. If you're lucky, time transforms grief from a suffocating wall of negative roiling emotion to an annoying roommate who pops in every once and again to eat your leftovers. But that's not where everyone is, and I feel it's time to shift expectations and accept that, for some, grieving in whatever form it takes lasts a lifetime. Eleven days ago, it was January 30th, and seven years ago on that date, my mother died. You process it. If you're like me, you go numb to get through the needfulness of helping your father set a date for the funeral because he's falling apart. And letting work know when you'll be back and the condolences and flowers and hugs and nice words. And you appreciate all the kind gestures. But you wonder what it all means when the entire world has collapsed inward but didn't take you with it. That's an experience we all feel and it's present in every variation of grief, whether it's via death or a divorce or a firing or a bad investment. It is invisible, and we need to get it out into the light. We need to say the quiet part out loud. I'm not over it, and I never will be. Sometimes, grief is quietly tolerated rather than conquered, and that is okay. I hope that when you look at these works, you see some of yourself in them, that it makes whatever grief you're carrying a little lighter, a little less annoying, for the knowledge that your struggle is not isolated. It's uniquely yours, but we're carrying it with you. Enjoy the show. Oh, all right. Hello, everyone. Uh, <laughs> is me, TJ Brown, the Soul Commodore, uh, as you might know me. Um, and today I'm going to give you a little uh, walkthrough of my exhibition here, uh, The Quiet Part Out Loud. Um, before we start, uh, before this part of the video started, you probably saw, um, saw and heard me do a voiceover of the speech that I gave the day of, but uh, I'm just going to read this real quick because it's in the uh, actual exhibition, well, a little newsletter that the uh, gallery puts out. Um, so I'm just read this real quick, because um, I, I, I wrote this too. Uh, grief, a somber subject, inescapable aspect of the human experience. All of us will suffer loss over the course of our lives, death, heartbreak, lost opportunity, to name a few, and we will grieve. For many people, that grief does not act as a singular rogue wave, which batters against us ceaselessly, and then subsides to calm seas. Rather, the waves keep coming, collapsing us when we feel we finally got our footing, serving as a reminder of its existence. Grief may become easier to cope with, but it is not always overcome. The series of works seeks to explore that side of grief, the vast, overwhelming isolation it can cause, even within our daily routines, exploring the stages of grief through the lens of memory, both the classic stages and those that are lesser known, such as crises of faith, questioning, and apathy. I aim to also explore representations of the manifestations of absence and loss on the physical body. These works collectively aim to explore how grief presents itself and how we manage to dwell within it. Sometimes, grief is quietly tolerated rather than conquered. So this first room here um, is meant to represent uh, 
the vast overwhelming isolation that grief can cause even amongst our daily routines. So that's what we're, uh, that's what we're gonna look at today. And this, this room, just like all the other ones, this is the Copa Gallery. Um, and just like the other gallery spaces, uh, this one kind of follows a loose narrative. Um, but uh, we'll get into that. But first uh, is this piece here. This is uh, cut off and tuning out. Um, and this is the first of, I think, seven pieces that are, that are six feet by four feet. Um, and yeah, we, uh, we see a little figure down here who is uh, watching TV, holding a remote out in the middle of nowhere. So pretty stark representation of feeling isolated in amongst uh, relative comforts of, of everyday life. Um, as you can see too, uh, the chair beside the figure is empty. Now, whether that means anything or not, uh, that's up to interpretation. And I kind of want to be loose with, uh, like this is all my own intentions with these works, right? It doesn't mean that they're right. Uh, but, uh, and it doesn't mean that you have to agree with what the interpretation is. It's just my interpretation. If you've got something different, that's awesome. Feel free to uh, leave it in the comments. But that's the first piece. And then, we move over to a congregation of one. This is very stark, very bleak. Uh, there's a, a lot of just white paint on this canvas. Also, don't mind the corners, um, just because of like vast changes in weather, because <laughs> the weather went from like fairly temperate here to like bone chilling cold to fairly temperate again. Um, the corners got a little wrinkled, um, but you know, that happens. Uh, it's nothing that a little restretching won't fix. And in this one, we have a vast, just empty landscape, winter landscape, um, with very, very like loose brush strokes. Um, I kind of wanted these pieces to be more um, uh, impressionist, more so than like really high realism. Um, and in this one, we've got a figure down here. We've got a preacher preaching to no one out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, hence the congregation of one. If a pastor is giving, uh, giving a sermon out in the middle of nowhere, uh, does he make a sound? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, that's the second piece. Then we move on to, the, uh, to this one here. This is multitasking. And once again, we have a very stark, uh, very stark sky. There's not a whole lot going on up there. Um, and a lush green landscape in front. Um, and down here, we see some sort of business dealing going on. Um, we have like an office plant, a table with a laptop on it, and some people shaking hands. You know, um, in amongst this vast nowhere. Um, this is actually the, uh, the first image that kind of came to mind when I was uh, putting all this together this particular series of works. Um, just, you know, somebody sitting in an office chair in the middle of nowhere, uh, that was the first interpretation, uh, the, the first uh, edition of it. And then I decided, well, I want a few more people in there, you know, someone taking notes, some people shaking hands, you know. Um, yeah. But this was, the, this was the first image that popped to mind when it came to the whole isolating idea of grief. Especially because like so many of us are forced back to work like way too early. Like we haven't even gotten over, uh, like in the context of death, we haven't really gotten over anything yet and we're kind of forced to go back into work. So now here we have a giant triptych, which I call collapsing. So I'm gonna back up um, to get all three of them in frame because we have the, the piece on the left and right are both six feet by four feet, and then the one in the middle is three feet by four feet. Um, they're all entitled collapsing. And it's pretty much the same thing across all three. Um, we have just a landscape in front, some clouds up at the top. Very, very impressionistic, very like kind of loose brush strokes making up the, uh, the ground in front. Um, no real details in there, but I didn't want that. I wanted this to be very, very stark. Um, yeah, not really concerned with realism. Uh, 
But on this final panel, we have a figure who is on their way down to the ground. Collapsing, if you will. And because my brushwork isn't all that well, um, <laughs> isn't all that good, uh, all of the figures in, in these works are done with, a, with permanent marker rather than paint. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's collapsing. And I think this one's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, you have a figure rushing toward the ground in amongst like three vast panels of uh, just complete nothingness. Um, and then we have over here, this is reaching out. And this one here, uh, you have a desert scene and uh, we have a figure in a phone booth and someone running up on him. Um, but you know, why would a phone booth be in the middle of a desert? Who knows, but that's the whole point, right? Um, I wanted a collection of landscapes that would make no sense for anyone to be out there. Any sort of like semblance of humanity would make no sense, you know? Um, so this is another one of those. Believe it or not, it's actually hard to get all of these tones of sand. Uh, I'm not sure I got it successfully, but I don't know, people seem to like it, so. Then over here, we have trying to adapt. Um, out of all of the skies, this is probably my favorite sky of all the pieces, uh, to be honest. Um, and then we have another kind of like arid landscape. And down here, we have a couple of figures. Uh, we have a waiter serving uh, this woman some, uh, some dinner. Um, and once again, you see another empty chair. Where it's just her, so read into that what you will. Um, but it kind of heightens the whole uh, aspect of, uh, of isolation and uh, loneliness that can happen with, uh, with grief. But yeah, this, uh, when I say impressionist, I mean, look, look at this rock. Like, it's very, very, very loose brush strokes. Um, you know, just kind of getting the impression of light and shadow. And the uh, penultimate piece is uh, standing in place. This is a four by four. It's located on this magic door here at the gallery. This door like swings on, on a pivot, which is kind of cool um, to get pieces in and out and other, uh, other implements of the gallery. Um, and here we have a figure literally standing in place, uh, waiting at a bus stop in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'll just go over some of this foreground. Like I said, very impressionistic. Very just kind of trying to get the idea of the shapes instead of going high detail. And then we have the final piece. Actually, I'll read all the titles of all these other pieces before we get into this one, just to reiterate. So we have Cut Off and Tuning Out, a congregation of one, multitasking, collapsing, reaching out, trying to adapt, standing in place, which can all kind of uh, represent the kind of stages that we go through when we're kind of moving through our grief in our everyday lives. Um, and then it culminates in and the world moves on. And this piece is the most detailed out of all of them. Um, still kept it fairly impressionistic, but um, you see instead of monochromatic like figures, these figures are actually in color. And basically what I did is I just looked up a, like a New York City street and just started painting figures from that image. So, you know, some of these folks, um, <laughs> We have a person with the yarmulke here. Um, I'm glad I was able to capture that um, convincingly. Um, yeah, we just have people moving through 
landscapes on these four different panels. This was originally supposed to be five panels, but I figured that it actually got captured in four. And anybody who might recognize the sky, this is actually the first thing that we did on stream um, was painting the sky, because this was originally supposed to be one of the six by four paintings. And then I decided to uh, kind of reuse it into, a, into this uh, politic is how it's pronounced. Because, you know, a trick tick is, is three, politic is anything, I guess you could call it a quad trick or something, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, but this one's supposed to be kind of a, a change of pace from the other one. It's not nearly as stark. Uh, there's more people. Um, some people have read into it that it's it's a little more um, it's a little bit more uplifting, you know, um, and the world moves on. I kind of had a different take um, in that the world moves on, and you can't do anything about it. Like you just have to kind of move with it. Um, so kind of a I don't know if pessimistic is the right word, but realistic, I guess. Uh, but some people found this a, a lot more, uh, a lot more um, uplifting, which is good. I'm, I'm glad that they had that interpretation. This one is opposite. Of course, uh, we have like a forest scape opposite another forest scape. And um, the edges of all of these paintings are white. Like I painted them white, I left them white. Um, except for the ones over here. Like these ones carry over um, on the edges of the uh, paintings much like this one, because I wanted that uh, duality between these two pieces, uh, you know. Because we have the figure over there that's all alone falling through the sky, and then you have all these figures here that are all, in a way, kind of dealing with their own grief. Um, I had a friend tell me that he found that this room, actually, was the most uh, uplifting of the three. Um, or hopeful, I guess, because you kind of you're stuck in your grief, but you kind of have to move on with it. Um, so he found that to be actually kind of hopeful, which it's what I love about art, you know? There's so many different uh, interpretations you can have with it. Okay, so with that, that's this room. That's the Copa Gallery. Let's move on to uh, the Heritage Gallery and uh, show what we've got going on in there. So yeah, this is, uh, this is the Heritage Gallery. And uh, let's, uh, let me put down this book. Because <laughs> this room's gonna take a, a little bit to uh, go through. So I knew that I wanted to do charcoal drawings. Um, I wanted to do, do charcoal drawings with this, uh, with this show as well. Um, but I wasn't sure exactly what to do. So I came in here. Um, during, I, there was an event here one night and I just kind of like formulated in my mind like how many drawings could I conceivably put in here? And I got to 120. So <laughs> that's what I, just visualizing with my mind. So that's what I went with. Um, hopefully this all turns out because it's a little more echoey in here. But um, well, there I am. <laughs> so uh, with that too, this entire room is about how grief affects our memory and the most well I guess long-standing aspect of, of capturing memory is uh, is photographs so all of these photographs here are a part of my life they're photographs that I've taken photographs that are of me or like of, of the people that I know um, but the, the majority of them are, are photographs that I've taken uh, and then I've altered in some sort of way to kind of, uh, kind of get rid of any sort of semblance of uh, a true memory. Um, and then I've categorized them. So we have uh, blurred images back here. And then we have um, omitted images here where there's, a, there's an omission. Um, and then we have an obstruction where you can't really see the figures at all. Uh, and then we have 
um, error, which is sort of like there, there's a film error. There's something that went wrong with the film. Um, and then we have, uh, here we have the, what did I call this one? Incomplete. Um, we have incomplete. Um, oh, I should have brought, I should have brought the card that I used to like fill out everything. I'll probably, I might put an image of it here uh, to show how I went like piece by piece, making sure everything got completed. Um, but I might, I, I might throw in an image of it right here. Anyway, um, on that card, I called these zoom because they're more zoomed in. They're incomplete images. You don't see everything in them. Um, it's zoomed in on one aspect of the photo. And then we here we have cycle. Um, and this is 18 images that are all the same. We'll, we'll get to this in a, in a second. And then on this wall, we have a bunch of distortion. We have 10 images of distortion. Um, there is one more series that was supposed to go up here, but unfortunately, uh, they didn't get hung in time, but uh, if they do eventually get hung, uh, I will come back and, and shoot that real quick. Uh, but those, those pieces were all just white. They were just white pieces of paper. Some of them were ripped, some of them were wrinkled up uh, to show, and, and they're titled Null Memory, which is to show, uh, I think there's 12 of them. It kind of goes to show like just, uh, just at, at some point, uh, your memory of, of your loved ones that are affected by grief kind of a uh, just kind of a race you know um, and I'll talk about that a little bit when we get to this side of the room again uh, and then we have this one singular piece uh, that we wanted to highlight on this wall um, and we'll get to this in a minute but this is another one of those film error ones and then here we have regaining which is kind of like you loop around the room and you come to this one um, and this is kind of a you're starting to regain your memories. So they're a little more sparse than the other pieces. They're not as full. Uh, they're just bits and pieces of figures, um, but it's kind of you're regaining that, that memory. On the pillars here, we have altered, which uh, I will talk about these a little more in depth uh, once we get to them, uh, because there is some meaning behind here. And then in this uh, little hallway here, we've got more. Uh, these are called sparse, and they're just like bits of images, but we'll get to that in a second. First, we're going to start over here with the blurred ones. So we'll just uh, take kind of a view of it from back here. Well, maybe. Can I fit them all? Kind of. There we go. And then we got uh, the first one that we did on stream, this one right here. So I'll just go one by one and sort of highlight. Um, so this is Picnic. Then we've got Spectre and Familial, Auld Lang Sign, Reunion, Paneling, Drinks, DNA, Shallow Land. Now we'll come over here with these, uh, these nine. And over here, We've got first week, the couch, gifts, orchard, celebrate, looming, waiting around, meeting, and finally into the deep. It should be noted that all these pieces too, they're all brand new pieces. Like I hadn't I had done some of these drawings and one painting in 2022, and then all the rest of it was done in January, basically. Um, so, but yeah, the whole idea here was to blur out the images. Uh, it's one of the easiest uh, uh, representations of kind of messing with, with a photograph. You know, stuff comes up blurry, and you can't really make out anything on anybody's faces, you know? Some faces are a little clearer than others, and some of them you can't make out anything, you know? Uh, some of them are completely blank, you know? Um, so I'll just go a little bit in depth with all of these people. This room is probably gonna take the longest, so I'll try to zoom through these as, as fast as I can. Um, but this is a, this is, um, I don't know, should I go into what these pictures are, or should I just leave it? Uh, anyway, <laughs> I don't know, I'll, uh, 
I'll think about it. Anyway, uh, yeah, these are all charcoal drawings um, that are, you know, just kind of altered. Um, and they're all sort of memories that I have or I have, I have seen, right? Um, yeah. So, okay, so this is, this is, this is my, uh, going from left to right, that's my uncle, one of my uncles, uh, my grandmother and my dad. That's me. This is me and my siblings. This is my grandmother on my mom's side with uh, two of her siblings. This is uh, three, three friends of mine. Uh, I was originally in this picture, but I took myself out. This is a, a group of my friends, my girlfriend and I, uh, during um, <laughs> New Year's. Uh, this is from university, a bunch of university friends uh, at a party. This is two of my cousins who are twins, hence the DNA. And this is me and uh, my siblings and a couple cousins uh, at a swimming pool when we were like very young. Um, now, the whole point of this room too was I, I wanted be people to be able to like see themselves in these works. Um, so I don't know if revealing what the source of these images are is kind of a, kind of destroying that, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I won't do that for the rest of it. I'll, I'll leave it up to uh, interpretation. I'll just point out a few, I think. Um, that's what I'll do. But yeah, that's uh, the curator actually, uh, Olex, asked me what the oldest uh, memory is here in terms of like the oldest photo um, that I that I took reference from. It was actually this photo because this photo is like from right around 1966. Because um, that's my mom, right here, and she's about two years old in this picture, so. That's, that's the oldest picture in, the, in this entire group. Uh, not just this group, but the entire, uh, all of these photographs. And over here, that's, uh, that's my older brother. <laughs> um, it's me and all my university friends uh, that I lived with uh, in our house, uh, celebrating my 22nd birthday, which was 11 years ago because I'm turning 33 in a month, which is ridiculous, you know? Um, it's another one of uh, my housemates uh, and I on the roof. Um, and then of course me, me and my lovely girlfriend at an orchard. Um, I had thought about doing pictures, like taking pictures just off the internet, like stock images, but I feel like it wouldn't be as powerful, like I wouldn't connect with them as much. Um, and even though there is a risk of people not being able to see past if they can like recognize me in any of these pictures, like not being able to see past that. Um, you know, I, that's a risk I was willing to take for these to be a little bit more personal and uh, being able to connect with them. Cause I think that makes for, for better art pieces, you know, if you're able to connect with it. Um, and also like the majority of them, like you wouldn't be able to, I, I think you're able to put yourself in them. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I, I would go piece by piece, but that might be a separate video that I do specifically for the drawings, just because there's a hundred and, th there's a bunch of them. <laughs> there's over a hundred of them, and we don't have the time to go through that um, piece by piece, I don't think. Um, one thing that is interesting with these is I tried to keep these edges as clean as possible, but you see that some of them kind of overlapped. Uh, the fixative that I used kind of sprayed over sometimes uh, and kind of like spread the charcoal, um, any loose charcoal dust that was on it. Um, some of them ended up pretty clean, but some of them didn't. Uh, some of them still have like smudges on them. Uh, you see a bunch of the sprayed charcoal there. Um, and some of them, the fixative actually like, because it was cold outside, actually kind of left like a, like a white milky film on the image. but. I feel like that actually kind of works in terms of like obstructing memory uh, because I mean who who among us doesn't have some kind of like family photo that uh you know someone spilled something on you know so yeah those are the blurred images moving on to omission and these are all images uh, where um, I took the figures out and it's just the the background image so here, also, uh, as you can see here too, you saw some of the blur too. There are some elements of other, um, primarily film error, uh, like here, right? Because it's, it's not a complete image right to the edge. So the, there's some parts missing. Um, same with here on this top one. 
uh, kind of blends into the, the film era as well. But here we have uh, lazing, looking a long way down, playtime, formal, conversation, post song, and grand maternal. This one's pretty self-evident. That's, uh, that's my mom there, that's my sister, and then my four uh, nieces and nephews. Um, but uh, yeah, this one, um, kind of highlighting that, you know, our memories, um, you know, it, 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 can, it can be altered in the way that, you know, they're blurry, or, or people can be removed from our memories, because uh, grief clouds them over. Um, and we don't remember things exactly the way they were, or the people that were in it. You know, um, they're completely omitted. This up here is a, is a cat, um, one of my cousin's cats uh, that I lived with uh, when I first moved up here. This was our family dog when I was growing up. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so that's the omission part of, uh, of the show. And then we have two walls here that are the obstruction. And these are basically like, like the lighting went bad and it's just silhouette, right? You don't see, you don't see any details of the figures at all. So here we have, this one I forgot to spray fix it on actually. <laughs> but the next one you'll see a good, a good look of what I mean by uh, the fixative just kind of like, clumping on there and, and kind of like making a mess of the, of the drawing. But here we have cardio. We have smile. See, that's what I mean there, like the cloudiness. Because beforehand, uh, all the blacks were like that black, but you know, that's okay. Uh, so yeah, smile, togetherness. And over here, we have Aquaria. We did this one on stream. Um, we have Dapper. And napping. This is another cat. Um, yeah, these uh, these are all depictions of uh, just uh, you know figures that have been blocked out by the lack of light, and we, we can't make any we can't make out any features. Um, you know, sort of a stark contrast to omission, right? and that's why I kind of wanted to put them both uh, side by side here. Yeah. Okay, we're a half hour in. That's not bad, actually. And here we have error, which is all like just errors with film. And we have uh, cor coral, like, you know, singing coral, not coral like the ocean. So coral without the E, basically. Side street. The chores, almost bedtime, B-I-B-J, trail, love, D-N-L, and beats. And of course, uh, the one singular image over there on the wall uh, is part of this collection as well. Um, so just like that one picture was the oldest picture in the, in the collection, this one's the newest one. This one was taken of my girlfriend and her friend uh, and myself. We, we all went for a walk uh, with her dog. Um, uh, when we went to New Hampshire, uh, like right before New Year's. So that's the most recent picture of the, of the collection. <laughs> um, but yeah, some, some notable ones here. Um, this is my paternal grandmother. We already saw her. This is another look at her uh, with her face not blurred, but it's kind of cut off. Um, and the, uh, the title of this one and this one, because this is my maternal grandfather, um, my, my mom's dad, my dad's mom. Um, they're both their initials, basically. Um, it's their initials. And this, of course, is my parents. Uh, one of my favorite pictures of them, my dad giving my mom the bunny ears. 
Uh, and then this one is with uh, me and two of my siblings. With uh, you can't see our faces. Uh, my oldest, my my older brother's not in this picture, but my younger brother and my sister are, and I'm I'm in the middle. Um, but yeah, it was very important for me because I, I mean, the, when you think back, like I kind of wanted these to kind of take on like a Polaroid uh, kind of effect. And I mean, how many times have we taken photos? Without, I mean, in the digital age, it's a lot easier to see if photos came out or not, right? But back in the day, like, you had no idea if the photos turned out well at all. And that's kind of, kind of what I wanted to capture here and here. So we'll move right on to uh, Incomplete. So up here, we have Comfort. New Hat Rack. Steppin. Hair Clip. Gone Away, Indoor Nature, Rotary, I'll give you three guesses why it's called Rotary, and Get In. And yeah, these were all supposed to be like just moments in time where you don't get the complete picture. Right? There's obviously more to this image, there's more to this image, that, but things get cut off, right? You don't see the entire thing, and that happens with memory as well when you're going through grief. Like, there's obviously so much more to this image. If you see a hand here, like, whose hand is that? Well, you don't get to see, right? Who's, we don't get to see any of the faces here, any of the complete faces. And up here, you know, we don't get to see anything really in this picture at all, uh, even though there is a figure in it. Same with this one. Same, same with all of them. It's, uh, you know, you get the semblance that there's something going on, but it's not, it's not quite clear. Now we move on to the cycle element here. And this is um, a series, 18 images, they're all the same. They have like little variances in between. And especially on the edges, like you see there's some that are smeared and still have like the, some fingerprints on them. Uh, there's 18 images. And this, with the apologies to Sufjan Stevens, is titled No Shade in the Shadow of the Cross. Now what I wanted to capture, th this is, the first image that I thought of um, in terms of this space. Like, I want something big on this wall. It's like the first wall that you see when you're walking into this particular gallery. So I wanted something kind of monumental here that's gonna like draw you in, right? Um, so this is the first thought that I had. Um, and I wanted to, because I mentioned in my preamble there that uh, crises of faith is one of the big things that we go through um, when it comes to grief that a lot of people go through. Um, and that can be a questioning of faith, a loss of faith, a regaining of faith. Um, you know, it can remain steadfast. It can go away completely. It can leave you questioning. Um, and this church here in this image that's completely blocked out by shadow um, is First Baptist Church in Chatham, Ontario. It's the church uh, that my parents went to, that we went to. It's my home church. It's the church that, uh, that I grew up in, church I was baptized in. It's the church that my parents had their wedding in. And it's the church that my mom's funeral was held in. Uh, my sister also got married in this church. Uh, so a lot of conflicting feelings about this, uh, about this church, especially because um, my, my sister's wedding was uh, like a year after my, my mom passed away, or maybe just under a year, but uh, it was still fresh and it, it was still fresh and new in our minds, right? Um, and I wanted to really highlight that in the song, no shade, of the, no shade in the Shadow of the Cross, which is a great song, Sufjan Stevens is kind of working through his grief, and what he means by no shade in the Shadow of the Cross is he uses shade um, in terms of a spirit, because that's a, a historical name for a spirit, a shade. And that uh, the ghost of his mother can't haunt him in the shadow of the cross. I had a little bit of a different interpretation, as it goes with art, uh, where uh, I took shade as in relief from the sun or relief from something, right? So there's no relief from grief in the shadow of the cross, because like, you know, like as, as a good example, like going to... Uh, going to my sister's wedding, right? there was still that little bit of grief that hits you because your mother's not there. And this is the church that you know, we basically 
said goodbye in. Right? Uh, my dad grew up in this church, loved this church. Um, only a couple of years ago did he start like going back regularly. Now he can't really go back as regularly as, as he'd like to uh, because um, of some health issues that he's got going on. But um, you know, even for him, it was very hard to set foot in this church again after my mom passed away uh, because it was just too raw. It was too painful. There were too many memories. So that's kind of what I wanted to capture uh, with this. Also, the fact that there's 18 of them and they're all the same image. One of the cycle, one, one of the stages of grief, um, well, not so, when you're, we're talking about stages of grief, a lot of people talk about the fact, I said it in the, in the text uh, before the video started, that you really see the whole like denial, anger, um, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Uh, but it's almost like it's supposed to be linear, but sometimes it's not, not linear. Um, sometimes you go back to stages, you know? You go back to anger. You, 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 you've accepted it, but you're still angry about it, right? Some people, though, never get out of one of those stages. Some people are in denial for the rest of their lives. Some people are stuck in anger. Some people are always bargaining. Some people will always have a crisis of faith. Some people will always be fearful, you know? Some people will just get stuck in a cycle of grief. And that's what this wall is kind of representing. Um, and again, I wanted to make sure to, like I, di I didn't want this entire show to be framed around death um, because there, we can grieve a lot of things. Um, but I feel with this room, it's just easier to like, pick on memories that might be touched by any sort of grief that you're going through, whether it's a, you know, obviously we have two people kissing here, right? Maybe that relationship broke down. Uh, spoiler alert, it didn't. That, that's me and my girlfriend. So it's, it's going fine and strong. But uh, maybe that relationship uh, broke down, you know? Um, you know, loss isn't just people, it could be pets, you know? Like, um, the one that was hard to capture, capture was like, you know, a loss of opportunity or, you know, like just a, um, any sort of thing like that. But, um, you know, it could be a friendship that falls apart, you know. But this one, um, I really wanted to capture like the, the questioning that can happen after a, after a moment of grief, um, going through something that causes grief. You know? And now we have distortion. Now, these one, th this group, I was mentioning to my girlfriend's mother, this is my favorite grouping of drawings in the show, um, in this particular part of the show. Um, it's my favorite grouping of drawings. We're gonna get to my favorite piece in the next room, but uh, this is my favorite grouping of drawings um, for the meaning behind them. And also uh, because uh, this was actually like work to get through, because uh, sketching these out, filling them in with the charcoal was fine. Uh, but sketching these out 18 times and trying to get them as exact as possible, that was rough. <laughs> that was a lot of, I, I, listened, I listened to a whole lot of podcasts. I listened to a whole lot of uh, uh, the, the movie, My Dinner with Andre, trying to make it through this. <laughs> but we did it. But this grouping, uh, the distortion drawings, these are my favorite uh, drawings that I did, just because they were fun to work on. So up here, we have Frigid. Missing siblings, and drag. We'll come back to those. I'm just gonna get through all of these. Snow day, passages, abroad, hands, over par, youth, and date and time. So, I come back over here. So, these ones uh, were a lot of fun um, because uh, it, it's very easy to see that like, they're, they're distorted, right? And this is just, what I did is I took the original, the, the original um, photos, just put them in Photoshop and just used like the liquid tool and other kind of stuff to like just kind of mess with them, right? Um, 
Some of you might notice that's my uh, profile picture on a bunch of stuff <laughs> that I just, I just dragged my face down. This is my dad and his siblings, uh, but there are some siblings missing. Uh, one sibling that he grew up with is missing, uh, one of my uncles, and then he has got two other siblings that are missing from this entire land uh, that he didn't really grow up with. I'm going to shout this out because uh, these ones were fun because you can't really tell what's going on in them at all. Uh, this one though is a friend of the channel um, <laughs> uh, and in real life friend, uh, best friend, Jake from the woods. Uh, so that's him and that's me uh, when I went over to the UK to visit him uh, a number of years ago. So yeah. That's fun. I might actually put either that one or I'll put one of these up so you can see what the original photo looked like um, along with it. This one, this image actually uh, was supposed to be on its side uh, because you can see these hands here are, um, you know, holding this figure up but uh they actually had it had 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 her standing up and it actually works that way as well like it's it's also a compelling piece that way uh, this one was fun to do all of these were fun to do <laughs> that's a picture of little old me Okay, so just briefly, I want to touch on what was supposed to be here, which was the, the white images that were just completely white. Um, when my mother died, and this happens with every type of grief as well, uh, in the aftermath of my mother dying, the one thing that I zeroed in on, I, mean, I have all these, all of these memories, right? All of this stuff, it's amazing to me that I'm in only 26 of these. Like, I'm only physically in 26 of these images uh, myself. But I have all these memories, and so many of them include my mother, right? And just in real life, too, like so many of these images include my mother. Actually, I don't think any of the distortion ones do, come to think of it. But anyway, so many memories that I have in real life, so many pictures, so many moments in my brain. And yet when my mother died, the only memories that I could conjure up were those when she was in the hospital. Three months. At that point, I was 25. I was turning 26. Um, and I had had an entire lifetime. 20, basically 26 years of memories that I, I, I have of my mother. And for whatever reason, well, because of grief, I could only zero in on the preceding three months. When she went in the hospital the first time, when she got the diagnosis, when, when we got the, the word that she was gonna have to do palliative care because there was nothing they could do for her. And then uh, when she went home for Christmas and then when she went back in the hospital and then uh, Unfortunately, eventually died, right? I only had those memories replaying in my mind constantly of her in the hospital. Like, I couldn't even remember her voice previous to the hospital, right? But slowly, over time, all of those memories started coming back. And that's what this final wall is about. But first, we have a piano here, which is funny because this is actually an organ, but uh, we did this on stream. It's one of the first images I did. It's actually technically 2022, but for the sake of ease, I just decided to put all of these as 2023. But that's me on my mom's lap at my grandfather's place playing his organ when I was a little, little lad. Like I said, with the film era, like you can't see our faces. But here we go, we're starting to regain snippets of our memory. So here we have marriage, Golden days, embrace, passing, congregation, and Tim and Kathy. So, this is uh, my older brother and his wife. These are uh, their eyes. This is my dad and one of the missing siblings, uh, one of his older brothers, uh, that was missing from that other image, and two of his younger siblings. This is my girlfriend and I, walking in embrace. This is uh, my mom and uh, my cousin, one of my cousins, uh, one of his sons. Uh, that's, the, that's the baby's hand there, and that's my mom's hand. This was taken 
the Christmas just before my mom died, uh, like a month before she died. Uh, congregation, this is uh, some friends and uh, my girlfriend's family. And this is Tim and Kathy. This is a, uh, I kind of wish this image would have turned out a little bit better, but with the starkness of it, it's fine. It's fine the way it is. I just wish I could, I could have done it a little bit better, but this is uh, an image of my mom and dad. I'll, I'll throw up the real image uh, to the left of it here. Um, but it's one of my favorite pictures of my mom and dad, Tim and Kathy. Okay, we're, uh, we've got about a half hour before this place closes, so I better get a move on. <laughs> so here on these plinths, this one here uh, included drawings that were entitled Shoreline, Skyline, Homestead, Propelled, and Secured. Give a good look at that. This was a uh, this was propelled. This was a uh, secured. Um, this one here, actually this one here, yeah, um, was shoreline skyline. There's another one that was secured, and homestead up there. And then this one here is a uh, distant. Uh, let me let me point it. Out. Distant nesting places, wild and secluded, and see these bricks here? That is defenestration. And what these are, are these were, because all of these drawings are 11 by 11, these were uh, eight 11 by 11 drawings that were basically photorealistic in all of locations, and just locations. There were no figures in them at all. And I figured, well, if your grief is tied to a location, um, that location is never the same after whatever causes the grief happens, right? Um, like going home hits a little bit different. Going to the church hits a little bit different. Uh, going to school, going to a place where you, where you were dating someone for a long time is one of your favorite hangouts or one of your favorite restaurants. You know, it hits a little different. You sometimes have to avoid that. So the reason I ripped these up is because you can try and put this back together and it'll kind of look the same, but it'll never be exactly the same. And that's why these are ripped up. And it adds a nice sculptural element to these uh, as well. Okay, let me breeze through these, uh, through these, because we still got a whole nother room to go through. So here, these are just bits and pieces. And all of these images have some sort of like lettering or numbering on them. So we have handwritten, 120 over 80. Vacation. Eats. Formative years. Risk. Hard times. Uh, nostalgia. No entry. Foreign. Faulty practice. Jeffrey Richmond. This one's just titled Smiley Face, like it's an actual smiley face, as you can uh, see there. And God. So let me just briefly go through all of these real quick. This one, handwritten, that's my mom's handwriting, Christmas 1991, which is actually, believe it or not, the same Polaroid that the couch came from. So that's that image. I just don't have any figures in it. I just have the uh, handwriting. And we decided to pair these together because that's my mom's handwriting. And that was uh, the screen that had my mom's uh, like blood pressure and, and, and heart rate and all that when she was in the ICU. I'm glad I took that picture. I'm not, I wasn't sure why I took it at the time, but I'm glad I did. And this is a, uh, these are the kind of personal, so I'll just go through these real quick. Uh, so this is uh, at Blue Mountain. Uh, my girlfriend and I took a vacation there. The Conan Shake Shop in Chatham, one of my favorite places still. This is a uh, Delaware Hall, as you can see there, at the University of Western Ontario, well, Western University now. Um, but that's, uh, that was my dorm. Nostalgia, this is the video movie shop, all boarded up. This is one of my favorite places growing up um, that's now completely gone. This is my workplace uh, when I was in Chatham. The Struggle was one of the uh, displays at the museum. This is uh, right near where we live, and there's like a no lifeguard on duty sign. Uh, 
this was in the back rooms of a, a sport check when I worked there. Well, not sport check itself, but the mall that I worked at. Um, I thought it was a compelling image. This is near one of my apartments uh, when I lived in Scarborough years ago. Um, just a Chinese restaurant that's over there. And this is a, a bookcase that I used to have um, that's been repurposed. But uh, that book there, Night Studio, is one of my favorite books. Um, it's about the life and career of uh, Philip Guston, who was one of the uh, kind of like post-impressionist, uh, abstract expressionists uh, that was very influential. Jeffrey Richmond is uh, this intersection in Chatham, um, near, near where I grew up. Uh, this is a sign that I, it just said, say no to drugs in a smiley face. I just snapped it because I thought it was funny uh, in a little community near where, near where I live now. And then this was a, a sign on a church and said, uh, it is not what we know, but who we know that counts. So I just kind of edited that out. And now we have the final room. And uh, this room is all about the physical manifestations of grief. Now these four paintings here, some of which we did on stream, actually combined to make a little bit of a poem. Because these four paintings put together are The Desperate Error To Bury Sorrow In a Vacuum And Leave It There The curator felt that these are kind of a Francis Bacon inspired, which I would agree with. Um, but yeah, the desperate error to bury sorrow in a vacuum and leave it there. And then on the opposite wall, we have ten portraits of some very, very stark, uh, like very in-your-face manifestations, physical manifestations that are happening to these people. And are all kind of self-explanatory. But uh, up here we have smoke. Very blurry. Viscous. Growth. Smolder. Smear. Crumble. Fragment. Atomize. Drip. And finally split. So these ones kind of go hand in hand with uh, just kind of the, just the physical look of, of, of grief and what, what it can do to people, right? You know? I should actually take a better image of these. So let me just go through these real quick to give you a better look. Because I just kind of walked past them. The time we got, oh, we got plenty of time. Still got 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, so these pieces, I, I really wanted to capture like physical, like just kind of the physicality of grief um, and the weight that we carry and the things that it makes us feel, right? Now, interesting note about this. This here, when, I, when the curator, Olex, um, here at the Station Gallery, told me that I got this show and he wanted to see all new work, I was racking my brain as to what to do. And I was laying in bed one night, and this image popped in my mind. It's the first image that popped in my mind for this show. Of a, of a man looking like he's kind of in agony, and just a smear where his face and hands should be. Yeah. That, was a, that was the first image. Now, my favorite image in the entire show is this one right here, Growth which we did on stream. We did a bunch of these on stream. Uh, the 
But this, this is my, uh, this is my favorite piece in the show. Uh, because I have wanted to do this image outside the context of this show. I've wanted to create this image since I was in university. But I was never confident enough in my figure painting to actually try it. Um, but here we are, all these years later, 11 years later, because I, well, technically I graduated in 2014, but I was done the art program in 2012. Um, here we are finally doing it, actually putting me on campus. Um, this entire show was actually a big, uh, well, this entire room was basically just a big challenge for me because I like figure work. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not good at figure. I, well, I don't know if I'm good, but um, I didn't feel I was good at figure work. I hadn't practiced figures. I hadn't done figures. I, I did like landscapes and stuff, right? Any figures that I did were silhouetted. But here, I challenged myself to really, really do figures um, and really like say something with them. There are a couple of these that my girlfriend uh, is not a fan of, just because they freaked her out. Growth is one of them, Drip is another one of them. Um, so, <laughs> once the show comes down, I'm probably gonna have to hide some of these. But, uh, this here, the, the fragment, is kind of a carryover using the palette knife from uh, the previous work that I was putting together for tracking, which that show still has yet to, to find a place, but uh, and now we come to the final piece in the show on the wall over here. And this is a, a four by four oil painting. Was that all it was? And this is a, a very blurry background image of me, um, completely distorted in front with a bunch of striations that are actually like physical and raised off the canvas. Basically what I did for that is I, uh, I took an Afro pick and just scraped it across the surface of the paint while it was still wet. Um, this thing took forever to dry. Uh, but I love the little touch that uh, when, when Olix was making the labels, he didn't capitalize all the words so that it's actually like a, a statement, like a sentence, you know, like a proper sentence. Was that all it was? And this is the final piece in the show. It's the last thing you see walking out of this room. Um, so, yeah. So that's, uh, that's it. I suppose I should like show myself. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's the show, everybody. Um, thank you all for, for coming along with me on this journey. I, this, this video is gonna be like an hour long, and I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, but uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed what you saw. Um, if you have any questions about any of the pieces, feel free to leave a comment or you can like, you know, DM me on, on Twitter or, or uh, Twitch, uh, whatever, whatever you like. If there's a piece that like jumps out to you and you wanted me to talk a little bit more about, because I just realized I didn't really talk about the process of like how I did anything. I was just kind of talking about the concepts. Um, but if you have any of that, uh, feel, free to, uh, feel free to let me know. I guess we'll wrap up in the, uh, in the big room. It's really raining out there. Oh, I should have mentioned that last gallery that we went into is the Ann Sims Gallery. Uh, that's where all of the uh, figure work is. But yeah, if any of you have any questions about any of the pieces or want any more in-depth, uh, you know, want me to talk in-depth about any of them again, uh, I can't. Uh, just drop me a line and uh, I'll come back and, and, and film a little bit more. Uh, so, but yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got to say. Uh, thank you again for coming along with this journey. Um, thank you for indulging me while I worked on some of these on, on stream. And, uh, yeah, these are, these are all going to be segmented in chapters. So you can kind of jump around to what you want. Uh, if you want a replay of anything, um, you don't have to like search for it because this is going to be a long video. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you all have a fantastic, uh, rest of your day and, uh, thanks for watching. We'll, uh, we'll end it on this piece here. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>